Hello, family. This is Deborah with Black Education TV. I'm going to be sharing another story with you, not because we don't realize these incidents are taking place, but I want to see, I want you all to see that there's um, a message, very clear message that is being um, spoken to us in which we have got to respond appropriately to this message. Oh, it's an article that was posted on News One about 18 hours ago, and the title of the article is Another Black Man Was Thrown Out of a Restaurant for Just Sitting Down. Okay, now it also has a subtitle that Cracker Barrel has a long history of racism against employees and customers. Now, you'll see what's interesting about this story. Um, I'm going to read the article, but what's interesting about this story is this black man and this took place um it, this wasn't something that just now had taken place but it's come back to the surface because of the legal action that um he has decided to take okay and I'm glad he took this action uh he drives a motor coach and so he had a decision to make he had passengers and you'll see as I read the article that he took the the more practical approach to this. Okay, because he had passengers, he didn't want his passengers stranded if he were arrested for not complying with what management wanted in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and read the article for you, family. It says, the Internet's list of receipts about Racism at Cracker, Cracker Barrel just got longer. A black man took his complaint about the restaurant to court after he was thrown out of Cracker Barrel in Cross Lanes, West Virginia. The federal lawsuit named defamation, outrageous treatment, and racial discrimination charges made by Randy Freeman, a 57-year-old, listen to this family, Air Force veteran and a motor coach company owner and operator. Freeman's complaint was made public on Twitter Monday. Okay, so I'm going to continue to read the, the article, but notice this here. He is a veteran, and he's a business owner, so he doesn't fall into their so-called, quote-unquote, lazy black man statistic or scenario. He doesn't fall into that. He doesn't fit into that in the least. He is a veteran, you see, and a business owner. So what is your excuse? Anyway, I'm going to continue reading. It says a manager at the country themed West Virginia restaurant and gift store forced Freeman to leave after he falsely accused the man of cursing at a waitress. According to the man's complaint. Freeman, who with his motor coach passengers, had only ordered food in a normal manner. Three witnesses who sat with the man at the table said the manager and assistant manager then somehow felt it was OK to kick Freeman out as if he were a criminal. A common form of mistreatment brandished against black men and women like a weapon. Notice they say it's, it's brandished as a weapon. That's a common form. Treat you like a criminal so that they can justify in their heads what they're doing to you. Okay, I'm continuing with the article now. Freeman posed no threat like the two men kicked out of Philadelphia Starbucks or the woman who was forcefully arrested at a Waffle House restaurant recently. He didn't raise his voice or resist the manager's command. He said to rolling out, I was embarrassed and worried about the consequences of resisting my ejectment because I owed my ultimate responsibility to my motor coach passengers who would have been stranded had I been arrested for refusing to leave, Freeman recalled. So I left without raising my voice or otherwise resisting the manager's commands. He also said that he was taken by surprise by the mistreatment something that he hadn't experienced before at Cracker Barrel, despite his history of racist incidents. Freeman, like the men in Philadelphia, had publicly spoken out against aggressive and racially charged incidents. 
He also has taken his protest a step further by going to federal court, a move that may force Cracker Barrel to address what happened at the West Virginia store. The restaurant and store chain has yet to apologize or even acknowledge the incident, Freeman said. The chain had previously been put on blast with Justice Department investigations over segregating and providing poor service to black customers as well as mistreating black employees. Considering this latest incident, a boycott may be on the way. Okay, yes, definitely, family. Boycott Cracker Barrel. There definitely needs to be a a boycott because unlike some of the establishments, uh, Cracker Barrel hasn't addressed it. They haven't apologized or even acknowledged it, even though there is a lawsuit against them. So they have definitely spoken loud and clear and said, look, we don't care if black people come into into our establishment. We as a people need to have some type of a, a, at least enough dignity to say, look, I will not go to these places. It is one of those things where I'm tired of our people continuing to support places that treat us this way. Now, I like one comment one sister said, because we fall into this category. She says she does a lot of her shopping online where stuff is just delivered to your door. And she only goes to the major places, uh, big box uh, retailers that you have to go to. You see, there are certain things that we just don't have access to or we're not able to get on our own. So you can order it online or you can just go to the major retailers, Home Depot, Lowe's, Kroger's, you know, places like that where you absolutely have to shop because there are not too many other options. Um, especially if you live in an area where there are not a lot of businesses to begin with. But in in cases where there are restaurants that have an established history of being racist or they're locally owned by individuals who have bought into a franchise, even if they're nationally owned, I think restaurants are the best places to boycott. Stay out of them. Like I said before, why would you want someone serving you food when they can't stand you? And they've already made it clear. Food is a very personal thing. Unlike something you buy at the the grocery store, which I'm not putting an endorsement on grocery store products because they have their own issues as it relates to how they even prepare the stuff. But the point I'm trying to make with prepared food or cooked food at restaurants, someone's hands have has got to touch this. Is being handled by someone and it is just not necessary. Just not necessary for us to go to these places and patronize them. You got the golf course incident. You have the Starbucks incidents, the Waffle House incidents. I mean, the, just so many places. I'm telling you, family, restaurants, you should probably just leave them alone. Support your own people. If you just have to eat something, support your own people because these companies are making it very clear. These people are making it very clear that they do not respect us. They do not honor our business. They don't care if we shop there because, again, um, I saw someone had stated that Cracker Barrel's food is not that good anyway. Almost 20 years ago, we went there when we lived in Michigan. And I can concur. It is not that great anyway. You see, their food is not that great anyway. So why are we even going to these places? Why do we even bother? Do we just love the, the, the abuse that they give us? It kind of reminds me of a person saying, don't beat me, Master. Please don't beat me. But you want to keep going and running behind Massa. You see, ridiculous family. It is utterly ridiculous. Now, I thank Sister Trinette for sharing that story with me. Um, These incidents, they don't surprise any of us anymore. But like I've stated in previous videos, I've stated that we've got to keep shining the light on these subjects for those 
of you who are asleep. And you may believe that these are isolated incidents. Like if you see one video, oh, okay. Oh, that's horrific. That's terrible that that happened. But it doesn't happen all the time. And then boom, here we go with another one. Then boom, another one. Back to back, boom, another one. There seems to be an escalation in these types of things, family. An escalation. And so we need to look at the handwriting on the wall. Come ye out from among them and be ye separate. And always understand why these things are happening. It was prophesied, family. We are the people of the book. The people of the Bible. And if you get in the word, you will see that this is a fulfillment of prophecy. A fulfillment of prophecy. So we need to act accordingly. We have been given instructions and we must obey those instructions. When we come into the lands of our captivity, we are instructed to keep to ourselves plain and simple. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world for they that love the world. The thing, the love of the father is not in them. We can't, claim to love the most high. If we are running after the people of this world who have already established hatred in their hearts for us. Now I know it's not every last one of the Gentiles. I know it's not because the scripture also prophesied that many of them would try to cleave to us in a positive way, of course. Okay. Many of them want the truth. And so we cannot prevent those that want the truth. But for those who are not seeking after the truth, stay away from them because they don't want you around them in the first place. They already informed us of that. And like I stated in the previous video, they are actually trying to help you keep the laws of the Most High, which tells you that we are not to make friendships with them. That we should come out from among them and be separate and that we should learn not the way of the heathen. I'm not talking about those that are repentant. I'm talking about those who want to keep to their ways and continue this ill treatment of us, treating us like trash. Don't be a glutton for punishment, family. They've already told you how they feel. Let's just go with that and act accordingly. And with that, I will say shalom.